Guys, Lenny Reed, Dynamite Diesel Products. Let's talk about injector sizing today. Uh, injector sizing can be related in, uh, a lot of people call up and they ask for a hole size. They want a, a six by 18 or a five by 25 or uh, whatever. That's really not a very accurate way to measure flow through an injector at all. So we don't really speak that way here, but we can, when you have that as a request, we can sort of kind of guess to what you're actually after. But if you have a horsepower desire and a horsepower goal, that's a much more accurate way for us to actually get you there. And uh, depending on the application, we may have to make some subtle tweaks. We're gonna start on the size of being too small because we can always make something a little bit bigger, but we can't really make something too big end up going back down to being small. We may have a few tweaks here and there, but we can custom size things very, very easily. Let's just follow the path. So now when a guy calls up and says, hey man, I'm looking for a bigger set of injectors, Number one goal should be X amount of horsepower. Okay, what do we got for turbocharger? All right, you got enough turbocharger. Now, what do we have for fuel supply? What do we have for camshaft? Some of these goals sound pretty lofty to me. 1,000 horsepower daily driven street truck sounds pretty lofty because nothing else around it's gonna live. Um, especially since a lot of the climates that we live in from California to New York, there's an awful lot of terrain with an awful lot of elevation change and air quality differences. So if somebody's using a thousand horsepower daily where they live right at or really close to a sea level and they've got good air quality, well, they're in luck. But if you try and drive a thousand horsepower daily at Denver or someplace, uh, say, uh, high up in Arizona, 7,000 feet elevation, the air quality's poor, there's not enough oxygen up there to burn that, and trying to get the same size turbos to light at 7,000 feet of elevation that you can light down at sea level, it's not really gonna work. So, although it may sound fun to drive a 1,000 horsepower daily, always focus on your goal. Are you towing a horse trailer? Are you towing a boat? Is it just your toy? Does your toy get you to work? Those are things that really should be considered, not necessarily the number. So, I enjoy driving stuff with a smaller turbocharger than I'm actually really needing needing. Meaning if I want say 700 horsepower, I'm gonna build me something that has enough air to barely get me to 700 horsepower, but that's it. The reason for that is because like a smaller turbocharger is much more fun to drive on the street than a bigger turbocharger. When you're on the street and you wanna make a 700 horsepower single, that's let's just say it's an S471. Well, that's great, you've got enough air to do it, but trying to get it to come off a stoplight very well is not that great. If you got a 6.7, it's easier than a 5.9 for sure because you're moving a lot more volume of air, but it's still not that fun. I would rather on the street drive something with like an S3 blowing into a very small S4, so I still have plenty of air to get me that 700 horsepower, but I'm also driving on that little S3, like an S362 or something like that, so it responds really, really well off the bottom. And if I've got a hook onto my buddy's boat, my buddy's snowmobile trailer, I can go tow it, no problem, it's just done. So horsepower and your specific need. Now, how much injector do you need for all that? Well, based off your turbocharger, you're gonna be able to spend so many RPM. So stock turbocharger is really calibrated pretty well for a set of stock injectors. I've seen tuners run those things out to 3,200 microseconds, and at that, they're super hot and they're super smoky uh, because the injector on time is so, so bloody much. You could get, now well, let's just say you get 575 horsepower out of a stock turbocharger. That stock turbocharger is really, really, really at its max, which is fine, but you've also done it at say 3,000, 3,200 microseconds. More effectively, you could put, say, a set of 90 horsepower injectors in there. You could still get that 575 horsepower and max out that turbocharger, but instead of being at 3,200 microseconds, you're gonna be down like 23, 2400 microseconds. A lot safer bet. What happens is the extra, say if I stop, we've got a beginning of an injection event and an end of injection event. Whatever happens in between here is duration or injector on time. 
Now, if we're gonna run 3,200 microseconds, we've stretched out the injector event so long that the exhaust valve pops the moment that we stop injecting fuel, meaning a bunch of black smoke heads out the exhaust system. To get 575 horsepower of the fuel with a bigger injector means we can do that at say 2400 microseconds, leaving us six, seven, 800 microseconds on the table for the combustion process to actually happen. That way when the exhaust valve opens, just goes out the tailpipe clean. Lower exhaust gas temperatures, nor do you have to advance the timing so much so your cylinder pressure is gonna drop. So it's just a way better way about going about doing it. Now, if you're gonna upgrade to something say uh, a mid-size S3, so you've got like a 364, 366, you're gonna spin say 3,500 engine RPM and that's when she starts to run out of air. I'm gonna recommend that you let your tuner know that your injector's calibrated for that turbocharger and they should stop your microseconds somewhere on 2,100 microseconds. Anything more than that and what we should do is we should bump up the injector just a little bit. If you've got a small S4 and you're gonna make horsepower clear up to say 4,000 RPM, I'm gonna recommend you stop about 16 to 1,700 microseconds. Anything more than that, and we really, really, really should be increasing the injector size. If you've got a bigger S4 or a small, fr a, a large frame, a smaller compressor wheel, large frame turbo, and it's gonna make horsepower clip to 4,500 RPM, I'm gonna really recommend that your injector duration stops at 1,500 microseconds. Anything more than that, it's just wasted energy, wasted effort, and we really, we, you won't really enjoy the exhaust gas temperatures. So next, gonna be the 5,000 horsepower, or 5,000 RPM mark. I've personally witnessed about 1,400 microseconds being pretty much the happy spot. And then on the really, really big stuff, when you got tons of air, GT55 or like a SXE 5 series frame, big turbine wheel, T6 manifold, 5700 RPM, 1200 microseconds, which isn't a lot of injector on time, but as the piston speed increases, the time between each injection event continues to decrease. So we have to really get that fuel in there very, very, very quickly. Now, Exactly what I just said broken down on the simple way is if you need to spend 5700 RPM, you need a lot of horsepower. And if you need a lot of horsepower, you're gonna to have to do it in a very short amount of time. Is that gonna be a fun street truck? No, not even a little bit. Would it be fun if everything was perfect in the world? Yeah, it'd be a ton of fun. But nobody really needs a 2,500 horsepower street truck because differentials, tires, transmissions, uh, jail, like all those things are gonna be something that you visit a lot. So, if you're gonna drive a seven or 800 horsepower truck, choose a small set of compounds, choose a really small like S4 frame turbo, um, the GT45s, somewhere in that range, and uh, make sure that your injector matches turbocharger, torque converter matches all of it, make sure that gears match, all of it. You can make something pretty reliable and pretty street, front, street fun, street friendly, but all those parts really need to match one another. And if you're having a tough time, we get the call after somebody buys the injectors, but sometimes parts of the truck aren't really put together correctly. So then they put the injector in and man, this thing just doesn't work. That's when we wanna see like a custom injector order form filled out. We can go over the whole recipe and then help you diagnose what it is about your truck. Torque converter stall speed might just be way too tight. And it might be awesome for somebody with a smaller injector and a smaller turbocharger, but it's way too tight for the size turbocharger you have. Doesn't make it a bad converter, doesn't make it junk, just makes it the wrong one for your recipe. Those are the kinds of things that after 22 years now, we've just gotten good at recognizing, seeing and fixing, troubleshooting. So, you know, if we can help you, we're, we're really glad to help you out. Um, I hope this video helps you and I uh, hope you guys are having fun out there enjoying your summer and your fall. And, Catch you on the road. Thanks. Lenny Reed, Dynamite Diesel.